Hello everyone, we have so much news this week. We are interviewing the homecoming king and queen. There's news about D&D, sports, and so much more. Let's jump into it. Hi, I'm Cameron and this is Lydia and today we have Artists of the Week. So Lydia, tell us a little bit about your art. Um, I kind of like drawing, doing characters. I have like different characters, like storylines and stuff like this. Like I have this one drawing where it's one of the twins, she has a twin sister, but anything she touches like gives life. And I have this one where they're actually both together. And this is supposed to be the one where she has, where she's death and anything she touches dies. And some of them don't really have a storyline. I kind of like just want to draw characters, you know, like this one is like a witch. And I kind of like drawing emotions kind of like that. Like this one is like a, heartbroken one kind of like and then my last one is a character his name is Gronick and he's supposed to be like a giant in medieval time wow that is absolutely amazing uh you definitely I, I can see where you definitely deserve to be artist of the week that is just magnificent all right so how long have you been drawing and can you give us a little bit of your artistic background I kind of been drawing, I guess, since I picked up, was able to pick a pencil. I've been drawing for like a while, and at first I thought I was absolutely like terrible, you know, until I started practicing more and more and developing the skill of drawing. And I guess since I've been like, I have obsessions over movies and stuff like that, and I guess I wanted to build my own characters and my own storyline to it, so yeah. That is just magnificent. That's all we've got for today. Let's move on to the next big thing. Hello, I'm Ryan Strum, and I'm here with Jordan, the homecoming king of this year. Tell me, what was that like winning for you? Um, it was exciting, I guess. Being around all the people and getting the crown, it was exciting. I get that, I get that. How, how does it feel in the like moment when you got it? Um, the exact moment you got it? I don't know, I really didn't know what to say. It just kind of caught me off guard. Yeah, I get, I get that, I get that. Okay, so to all the people that like, voted for you, like, what would you like say? Um, all I could really say is thank you for all the support. Well, you heard it from him. If you see him in the hallways, give him a high five or a thumbs up. And for our next story, Wildcats, we're here with Leslie, and we know that something happened over the weekend that um, was really cool. Could you tell us about that? Yeah, well, on Friday at the game, I got crowned as homecoming queen for the 2022 school year, and it was very exciting. Um, caught me off guard, but I'm glad that everyone voted for me. How did it feel? Um, it was nerve-wracking at first because I was going against a lot of girls that um, had a high chance, and I'm very proud of them for being one of the nominees. But I'm also um, very grateful that people voted for me and chose me to be your queen. Is there anybody you'd like to thank or give a shout out to? Definitely my dad. He went out of his comfort zone to be there with me and all my family and friends that were there and most of all Coach Jenkins for allowing this to happen and Dr. Morgan for crowning me at the game. All right, well thank you for coming and telling us your story. Thank That'll you. be at Wildcats. Hi, my name is Lauren and I'm here with Chris and he's going to tell us about Dungeons and Dragons today. So what happened last Friday? So last Friday, Mr. Lance gave us a presentation on what will be, what D&D is like. Uh, for example, it is a role-playing game that you get to make your own character, play as the character with the DM, who is the dungeon master, who is the narrator. And yeah, we just got into our groups, made our characters. Well, does your campaign have a certain uh, theme right now, or is it still up for the works? Uh, some DMs don't necessarily have a made campaign right now, but the one I'm in, it, it's about all these different countries that uh, joined together to work on this ruin that was destroyed a long time ago. And we're trying to uncover the mysteries of what happened in that ruin. All right, that sounds interesting. Um, how many players tend to be in a campaign? Uh, on average, there is typically about six, but uh, there is no limit to how many you can actually have in said campaign at once. Mm -hmm. So when exactly does D&D &D take place? So D&D, &D, Dungeons & Dragons, takes place once, ev once a week, every Friday, from 3.45 to 4.45 in room 501, uh, the theater room. And that's about it. That's really all that's going on so far. 
Thank you, and on to the next story. Hi, my name is Joe. I'm here with Koi, and we're going to be talking about the uh, theater play that's going to be happening. So I heard that there were some auditions last week. Uh, how'd they go? Uh, well, yeah, they went great. Uh, everyone was having a great time. The energy was like right there. It was very good. Everyone just knocked it out of the park. Uh, I remember auditioning and with Malachi, and it was it was fun. I had Colton there as well. It was just the energy that day was perfect, and I can't wait to carry that over to uh, the play that goes wrong uh, when we rehearse and when we uh, finally put uh, the play on on November 17th and 18th. So who auditioned for this play? So we had 39 uh, people who auditioned for this play that day, and uh, I have a list of the people that have made it, so I'll be announcing the uh, characters and their actors and actresses. So for the play that goes wrong, for Sandra, we have Zion, Savannah, Max, yours truly, Dennis uh, as AJ and Isabel, Annie as Sammy and Andrea, Trevor as Cecil and Caleb, Chris as Ezra and Jaden, Jonathan as Vincent and Colton, Robert as Malachi, we have General Understudy, Kendra as Jonathan and Libby with Robert, and we also have Crew as Destiny, the stage manager, Haley the lighting overlord, Ben the lighting underling, Miranda, Lauren, Teresa, and Sarah as makeup and hair masters, Gunnar and Steven as sound legends, Lewis and Sarah as costume grandmasters, and Jesus and Tanner as general technicians. Well, I'm gonna say congratulations to those who made it to the play, and I can't wait to see it. So what uh, what day is it? Uh, we will be putting this play on November 17th and 18th, so please make sure to come check us out. All right then, well, this is all the time we have. Thank you, Court, for talking to me, and see you later. Hi, I'm Sammy Houchins and I have Isabel with me here. We're going to talk about the dance. So what happened the night of the dance? Um, we just all got together. There was a DJ. It was, it was a really fun experience. Yeah, what kind of music did they play? Uh, they played a lot of pop country, like pop early. Pop country? Yeah. yeah, I don't know what I expected to hear. Mm -hmm. uh, so I heard that there was a lot of there was a light show happening or something. Yes, so they had lights on the ceiling, mm. and they just made it like really colorful. And then we had stream lights hanging off. They did a lot of like excellent work. Oh, so they went all out for this one, huh? Yes. Okay, nice. Uh, what do you think about it? Did you have a good time, or I did have a good time. Um, I think that Coach Jenkins did a good job, like putting it together, and it was a really fun experience because we haven't had like a homecoming dance in a while and right. right and it used to always be we would just come in our jeans and everything so for her to make this a really good like formal event and even for the kids the underclassmen that don't get to go to prom it was like a good experience for them to have a dance that they could like yeah right mm -hmm. it's an excuse to dress up huh yeah well that's it for this week wildcats see you later